Hey, Bobby, can you hear me? Yes. Can you yes. hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Welcome aboard, okay. and thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have a few more people joining in. Uh, just give a couple of minutes. I think we have sure. Sure. close to 19 so far. That's nice. Good. I was actually playing that music from World War Z, by the way, and I really love that track. It's a beautiful one, and I think, you know, I think key inspiring note there. <laughs> Good movie. Good movie. I love it a lot. It is. I love it a lot. I actually can't get I can't get over the fact that they got away with making that PG thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah, I agree. But I thought they were actually coming up with a sequel. No, I think that was a different one. I think that was um, um, which was the other one. I think the Army of Darkness. I think right. I think there was one more. Uh, uh, well, I did hear about the sequel to World War Z because um, there's like. I think two more books written for it. Uh, I can't remember the other sequel coming out. Right. I think we can get started. It's sharp on time. I think the others will join in anyway. Uh, but again, I think I'll just, uh, you know, I think put the rules out there. This session is to actually help everyone, uh, you know, I think get their hands back onto the basics. Uh, everyone should draw a log. I mean, say, I mean, nobody is a pro or an amateur. I mean, uh, I think when it comes to, uh, you know, I think finding our roots back, I think we want to revisit them. Okay, and you guys can post questions in the Q and A section, and you know, I think me and Poppy will try to answer those, uh, you know, as we are progressing in the session. And yes, do share your works, whatever you're drawing, put them in the chat so that we can actually share some feedback or review. And, you know, I think, yes, a basic bit of appreciation. I've also shared an art station link to Bobby's portfolio, one of the best art station links I've seen in the recent times. And there we go. Bobby, the stage is yours. All right. Uh, I, I did notice in the chat that voices were echoing. Is my voice echoing for anybody else? Because I actually hear my own echo. I think it's probably on my end. Let me just mute and see. Okay. 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 Testing. Testing. Only slightly. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll try to uh, try my best here. So, so I'll go over my own work and then uh, walk uh, through what I've been doing for games in the industry, and then uh, uh, I'll start on the process of thumbnail sketching. The meat and potatoes. Okay, so first of all, I got to share my screen. Otherwise, that would not be productive. <laughs> you see. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so I'll just jump into my art station. Um, so those of you that don't know me. Uh, my name is Bobby Rebholtz. I've been in the industry now for about 12 years. I Most of it has been freelance. And then over the past five years, I've been working for some bigger studios. But my niche has always been creature design, obviously, because I draw creepy, hairy alien bug stuff and things that are not nice. However, I do draw cute and cuddly things every now and then. I have recently been doing a lot of environment sketching. So if, if you followed my work along, I, I went from a lot of traditional stuff, like all these demons and, you know, I'm an 80s child, so I grew up watching horror movies. And to me, I think the 80s were the golden age of horror movies, and like Freddy, Jason, American Werewolf in London, all those. But um, as I started working more with studios, there's been more of a demand with colored stuff and also environments. So just mixing that in. Um, today, I'm going to be going more into this type of process. So good old fashioned thumbnailing, because I tell a lot of my students how important this phase is and how overlooked it is. Uh, mainly because, you know, we as artists, we, we get these images in our head of something cool that we want to draw, and we don't want to go through 15 to 20 iterations of that thing. And then what happens is we we don't really have a good design. So one of the things that I'm going to touch base on today is self-editing and being your own art director so that 
like when when you do join a team or you're working with a client, they'll be able to trust you and hitting the ground running and giving you a big task. So, uh, okay, so let's back out here. <clears throat> I, sh I showed you guys this yesterday for the test run, so I might as well just go over it. All right, so this is like the culmination of everything that I'm gonna be talking about today. So back in 2016, I believe this was done in the month of June. It was my 500 creature thumb ch thumbnail challenge. So down here, you'll see Ecor 117. That is my personal project. Ecor 117 is a planet. And on this planet, there's a plant source that can prolong human life hundreds of years. So obviously, you want to get to that to try to, you know, th think of Pandora for Avatar, but much more vicious. Um, so it's hard to believe because you got creatures on that planet like the Thanator and all that stuff. But this is way, way deadlier. So I wanted to make my library, like my first library of creatures. So I just started doing these every day. And one of the things that I want to Actually, the major thing that I want to go over today is the importance of doing thumbnail sketching every day, re regardless of the subject matter. So my niche, obviously, is creatures. But if you want to do weapons, characters, environments, props, doesn't matter. Getting these thinking drawings out, as Feng Zhu would always say, will help build your skills not only in iterating, but also it'll give you a backlog of stuff that you can use for future projects. So, for example, even if you, you know, like, let's say one of you guys are going to be drawing today and you come up with six creature thumbnails, like here at the bottom, that's six different projects that could span six months. Okay. So, one of the questions I always get is, how much should you put in your portfolios? And the answer is, whatever amount you seem fit in order to achieve your goal. You know, like six pages, 50 pages, doesn't matter. Make sure it's all good, of course. But, you know, the other thing about thumbnail sketching, and I'll go over this in the demo in a little bit, but it's about telling a story. It's about going through a journey. So thumbnail number 500 down here is different than thumbnail number one up here. All right. Uh, it's just, that's just what happens. I wouldn't get to 500 unless I did 499 to get to that. So like a little disclaimer your stuff is probably going to suck. It is, but you like as concept artists, I think we we get past the idea that we have to fail. You know, it's okay to fail at your sketches, it's okay to fail at your paintings. Not all of them are going to be pretty. As a matter of fact, 99% of them are probably not going to be good. And you know, you guys are in the industry, you know, but I mean, some of the industry heavy hitters out there, you should see their their sketchbooks like just doodle after doodle after doodle on napkins, envelopes, whatever. Um, but I'll get I'll get more into that. So let's see here. Let's jump back. So this type of work that I've been doing is a mixture of environments, creatures, but also a ton of photo bashing. So this technique is taking photo like high res 3D textures. We got my old art station photo packs that I bought maybe four or five years ago that artists were kind enough to post and sell on art station. And then I just Google, I just Google high res images of like tanks and weeds and people. You know, um, for example, like this one, the acid pit, hot springs. I just looked at Yosemite National Park, hot springs around the world, um, cesspools of acidic water, stuff that you can't swim in. You can see here, it's a mixture of like 3D rocks. That's why it looks a little different. And then it's a heavy paint over. So these were my sketches that I did. And this, I, I settled on number two because I pulled from these four and then I settled on number two. And then the next in the pipeline is I'm going to do a quick little colorway for it. And then just to get you know, I was just eye dropping colors just to see what works from photos. And I liked this one. So then I just started painting over it. You know, back in the day, I would try to paint environments by hand with everything, like paint every single rock, every single weed. 
And I, I, it got to the point where that was becoming so daunting that it was uh, taking up too much time and my lighting was awful. <laughs> so just uh, didn't, didn't want to do that anymore. But jumping into my creatures, you know, today's theme is creatures, obviously, with thumbnail sketching. But this is my original thumbnail up here. I, I pulled it from other drawings. I think this was a pen sketch, actually, just ballpoint pen. And then I just wanted to come up with a fun little silhouette. I can only imagine how that thing was walking. I think I got, I can't remember where I got this background. I don't even remember. Maybe half of it was Mars, and then I just saw some plants and plucked them from Google, started placing them down there. So that was a lot of fun. And hard to believe I did that a year ago already. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, here's some, some more of my character work. I just do some different doodles, different outfits. I also have a soft spot for sci fi mainly cyberpunk you know, dystopian futures i love that stuff not necessarily post-apocalyptic but you know i when you look at my portfolio most of my work is creatures and that's what clients want me for but uh i like to sprinkle in some characters also uh oh yeah this this was a movie i worked on the sea beast on netflix came out two years ago i worked with director chris williams and this was back in 2018, actually. One of the recruiters from Netflix was like, hey, Chris Williams left Disney. He joined Netflix so he can do something a little bit more daring. You want to design a bunch of sea creatures that attack ships and people hunt the sea creatures. And I was like, yeah. I mean, who's going to say no to that? This is only a little bit of, of my, my concepts. Most of it did make it in the movie, but they kind of, they had to streamline the designs a little bit because they were kind of scary i believe it's a pg movie i i thought he was going rated r so yeah i didn't want to push it too far but this main character her name is red i think they shrunk her size too but uh you know she has a soft spot for the child in the movie and this up here was a little ship so the the creature itself shrunk about half that size and these you know monster hunters travel the world and they hunt these monsters and figured out that i don't want to give anything away you, you check it out it's on netflix it's a netflix movie up here was the brickleback very nasty monster uh this was the yellow warbler there is a scene in the movie where the yellow warbler is not swimming they turned it into like this uh big walrus thing with a bunch of a sea of babies rolling around it's it's pretty funny this one's probably the meanest one the crustacean fights red so it's a lot of fun these are all my this is about half the thumbnails actually this is what i started with so this is what this is the you know the the heart of my lesson today is thumbnail sketching we couldn't have got to this unless i started with this so just bear that in mind okay and also if if you guys are if you have questions and stuff hold on let me see if there's any questions here yeah, oh. I, I'll I'll keep asking on their behalf, uh, Bobby. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, and it also says we lost you. I'm I'm sorry. I if the connection came out or anything. Okay. Um. Let's see if there's anything else that I'd like to show you before I jump into it. Nope. Just just splashing color on ink drawings. And this is my sketch. I just took a photo with my cell phone. Probably shouldn't be my portfolio because it's not very presentation worthy. Um. But yeah, okay, so without further ado, let's jump into some thumbnail sketching. That's okay with you guys. Yeah. Okay. I have one question to start with. Like, uh, so do you spend uh, most of the time like doing this on paper or do you prefer the digital vote? I prefer paper. Yeah. Paper, right? Yeah, uh, just I'm a traditionalist at heart and I just find more freedom drawing on paper. It's weird. I've been using a Wacom tablet, Cintiq tablets and all that since like 2003. I still find a weird disconnect between looking at the computer screen, but drawing down on a tablet. There's just something still strange about it. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. So I just try to get used to it. OK, I don't do anything fancy with my thumbnail sketching. I, the brush I use comes default. It's Kyle Ultimate Pencil Hard. So I guess Kyle was a graphic designer that Adobe hired a couple years ago to design a brush pack. 
for them. It's in dry media brushes. He's got a he's got quite a few pencil brushes in there that are good, but this one in particular is the closest thing I found in a digital world that can mimic a real pencil. So it's nice. Okay, so what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna do thumbnail sketching and then I'll show you how I bring the thumbnail sketching into refinement. And then uh you know we'll we'll go from there. So I like to give myself a ground plane. I'm also a bit of a neat freak when it comes to my thumbnail sketching. I just like to organize everything, keep space out in between each drawing. And then when it comes into the more elaborate stuff, I'll draw bigger thumbnails than others. Okay, first lesson is allow yourself to scribble without worrying too much about what you're putting on the paper. A lot of times, even when we start the thumbnail stage, we we all already obsess about what we're drawing and messing up on. And I think that's one of the biggest uh, biggest detriments to our drawing is like we don't allow ourselves to fail. All right, and, what, and what happens is I am just lightly placing these lines on. This is a combination of thick to thin lines, quickly drawing them so that the lines are very clean. I guess I'll just do a page of bugs. Why not see what happens? As far as how much time to spend on these, have your cell phone ready to time yourself two or uh, three to five minutes. That's usually what I give myself. Three to five minutes will give you a, a decent thumbnail. So you can see some of these areas I'm just placing darker. It's because when the light comes down, I don't want to spend too much time shading. You shouldn't be shading thumbnails this fast, but the dark lines give the indication that there is a shadow in that area, and it also helps ground the sketch. So you can see here I'm just doodling on some shapes where I think a bug could be. Okay. So now the, the other beautiful thing about doing something like this <clears throat> is that if a dozen, two dozen, three dozen people are looking at this thumbnail sketch, there's going to be three dozen different ideas that are just coming out. So that's that's the beauty of thumbnail sketching. So you're not obsessed about one idea you had in your head. Once I get to this point, I might throw in a couple hatch marks in here, like single hatching. Uh, darken the underbelly of the legs. This, and then what I like to do is I like to connect the ground to the leg, just to kind of ground my sketch here. And the the other fun thing about this is like when you look at this sketch, you look at all of these shapes happening. So you got this area, you got this, you got this. It could be all kinds of things. So the image that I'm getting in my head is, okay, this is the hip, this is the hunchback, and then this is maybe a shield for the face. I don't know, there's a leg. There's the other leg on the other side. So like in here, is so, I mean, there's so many different things I could do. I can put some shading down right here. So maybe there's a, a hard shell crustacean visor going over the head. You know, maybe there can be some teeth in there. Uh, then the underbelly will get slightly darker. Because even at this stage, let's say you're you're making a presentation board. These are dirty, gritty, hairball looking sketches. It's still important for your presentation because we all want to tell a story. We all want to say, hey, this is where my design came from. So then when you zoom out, there's still a lot, there's a lot to say inside there, or I should say the sketch is saying a lot of stuff. Okay, and then what you do, what I do, is I number them. So let's say number one, and then I jump into number two. So I just stopped myself. So the other thing about thumbnailing is, and this is one of the hardest things about it, trying to come up with a completely different silhouette than the first one. <clears throat> so I'm just try something different here, throw in some spheres. I don't care what happens. I'm just going to see if there's any connection. Kind of looks like a motorcycle. That I don't even know if this will work. The other thing is some of these might be spaceships. I don't know. You get this whole library filled up and you're like, oh, okay. I guess that could be a, a gun or a ship or something. Okay, so that actually looks like a football helmet. Pretty funny. <coughs> Sorry. 
Okay, the air's really dry, so just let me clear my throat. All right, and, so and these have... shapes are uh, completely random, right? I think there's nothing that you are envisioning up front. Nope, just totally random. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to obsess about anything in my head. Uh, I'll let that come out in the refinement stage. But if I see some lines that are together that are intriguing, that's when the idea starts to come out. Like right now, I see a quadruped, like a really big bull creature, you know, like a big round face. Maybe this is a tusk. That's the hunchback kind of looking like a bison or something. That's the hip. That's the tail. And I, I wasn't thinking that. I was just randomly throwing things together. And then that happened. So then I'll darken some areas, maybe put a really big beefy body in there. Legs that look like they belong on a Clydesdale. There's the feet. Uh, I know that I want that to be the belly. Maybe the like the genitals right there. And then the head definitely looks like a space bull. So let's make that a horn. Not really caring about the face. That doesn't matter. I'm just leaving this open for interpretation unless I want to come back to it. Love the hunchback, though, so I'm going to keep that. Okay, and then I'm going to hatch in some shadow for the leg in the back. And then that leg in the back. Uh, the tail. Maybe it's curled up like that and it's not really long. So then when I zoom out. I got idea number two. And then we just move on. We just keep going. So let's see what happens. OK. Something different. Um, just throwing lines together. I mean, at, at first, I said, I'm, I'm, we're going to do a bug. I don't know if these are all going to be, but oh, yeah, this is definitely a bug. I kind of see it in my head already. I don't know how this is going to work, but maybe a very compact jumping spider bug or a crab. All right, so that could be the leg in the front. I don't know where the head is. There's the head. Back leg. You see how I'm just throwing lines together and I just don't care where they go. That's totally fine. Just allow yourself to do this. Also, it's going to relieve so much stress when you're not obsessing about making everything perfect. Thank so you. much. You actually it will turn start out as legs and uh, it will also be the fangs of the creature there. I and mean, that's amazing, actually. Yeah. It could. It could. It, there's so many ways that you can interpret this drawing. Uh, I mean, yeah, like this could be the, a huge mouth. Like, I don't know. Maybe that could still be the head. That would be pretty crazy. So if we round off the shoulder, just draw an eyeball. There's the mouth opening up. There's some sharp teeth, almost like a piranha. We'll put a little shine on the eyeball. And all of a sudden, it's something out of your nightmare. Looks like something out of Silent Hill, actually. There's a lot of scary games coming out lately. Yeah. I just saw one. It was GTFO, like super creepy. I see all these uh, YouTube shorts. They're hilarious for people's real-time reactions on horror shows or horror games. There we go. The reaction videos are really, yes, they become very popular. Uh, if, yeah. if you have to look back into creatures, like, the, you know, you have one from Stranger Things and then you have one from uh, Cloverfield. Which one do you think is more evolved as a design? Uh, probably Cloverfield. Um, Stranger Things is amazing. I love Stranger Things. You're probably thinking of the Demogorgon. Um, yeah. The... the the, the big creature, you know, the one that's like all black and it looks like soot. Um, it's good. And I like Vecna, too. I think Vecna is an awesome character, but a great actor. I've just I've seen that character hundreds of times. But with Cloverfield. It's one of my favorite designs, because not only was it a, a big. It was a baby, it wasn't even the adult. Um, smaller creatures fell off of it when it scraped its body against skyscrapers. And then those critters came around and like bit people and they blew up. Like it was, it was just nasty. It's crazy. It was design. crazy. Yeah. Very true. And the sequel's coming out, like the real sequel. Um, I, okay. So the other thing is, since you mentioned Cloverfield, out of the 
Cloverfield, 10 Cloverfield Lane, and then Cloverfield Paradox. 10 Cloverfield yes. Lane probably had my favorite creature in it. That thing was just bonkers. Because Kurt Papstein, I believe he's the one that designed that creature. Amazing. Uh, 10 Cloverfield, or Cloverfield Paradox, I thought was kind of a weird movie. I did like the other dimensions, and it showed the adult version. <laughs> making King Kong look small. But... um. The sequel coming out is like a direct aftermath when Rob and Beth were, you know, under the bridge and the bomb went off. Uh, it's going to show what happened after that. See, I've been on this way too long. Here I am yapping. Okay, there's number three. Okay, so far, that one's my favorite. So each each time you go to a new thumbnail, you always try to top the other one. It's really hard to do, especially if you if you our heart, like your heart set on some of them. So this one, why don't I just do front view? We're going bugs today, so why not do bugs? All right, so this one is probably going to be shaped like a plant. Very big oval body here. I don't know what the face is going to be, so I'm just throwing lines together to see which shapes come out of it and intersect. Now it looks like a cricket. Okay, so probably the mandibles will be right here. Um, let's see what happens. Uh, one eye. Okay. <laughs> there it is. One eye. Cyclops, uh, beetle. I don't know what it is. Like a mutated locust. I don't even think these wings would work. So it could be fake wings. Kind of like how ostriches have, and penguins have wings that don't really help them out. Maybe it has a proboscis. That's kind of gross. Okay, so what I'm doing yeah. is, I, what'd you say? No, I said it, it, it is gross actually, especially once you add the proboscis. Yeah. But this kind of creature, it looks like it would just stare at you and, and you would just freak out. Um, kind of reminds me of the movie The Mist, one of my favorite movies of all time. I don't know if you guys have seen the mist, but the the creatures in there. Uh, we're talking about other dimension, this which is true. That's where they came from. Okay, I'm also a big fan of Lovecraftian horror, so I probably could tell because I put tentacles and everything in mine. I haven't put tentacles in anything yet today that I've been drawing, but that'd be kind of fun. Okay, so As you you're can see here. Talking about tentacles, uh, I think you know uh, you were talking about white spikes. Yeah. Love that movie. Those creatures were and are my favorite creatures that come out in a very long time. They're deadly, multiple legged, super vicious in the face. Just really cool. And then it shoots the, I guess, the hardened resin that comes out of the tentacles. All right. So that texture that happens is another beautiful thing about thumbnails. I spent no time at all on this. And by overlapping, and jagged strokes going back and forth. It's kind of like doing figure eights. You just do eights like this, and you go up. You just do eights. All of a sudden, you have tree bark, you have dirt, you have cement, you have hair, scales. And I did that in like two seconds. So then you don't have to worry about going hog wild and doing every single little fur, scale, spike. Like It doesn't matter. All right. So now we're getting somewhere. We started with this bugger and then we came over here to number four how much time do we have actually uh what when do we start the q a is it in 30 minutes and we're gonna do it in 45 minutes 45 minutes okay that's plenty of time all right so let's do another row and then we'll do then we'll pick the little one over there okay move on to number five actually i'm just going to number these before I do anything. All right. Um, let's see, side view, side view, side view. Let's do one front three quarter view. Okay, so this posture is going to be a little different and a little bit smaller of a body, but more so like a spider. I don't know how this is gonna work because I'm mixing in a little bit of mammal. 
All right, and then the legs. Hmm. Okay, let's do this. Let's do something really creepy. So the legs are going to bend just like a, a cat. Hard shell, kind of like a beetle. Front legs come up like an insect. And then the head is stooped down low. And then maybe we have some weaponized pinchers or appendages coming off the face. See how I'm not spending too much time in the shading. I'm just, it's almost like being or uh, putting in a stick figure. We're just kind of doing a wireframe of shapes. I need to darken that face though, because that's where I want the majority of the attention to be. So I'm just going to put a bunch of eyes right here that are black, jet black eyes. Merciless, just jet black eyes. Another creature that I've been really impressed with over the past couple of years is from Love, Death, and Robots. Uh, my favorite it's, it's episode. Not talking, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Beyond the Aquila Rift is still my favorite episode. Just oh, that's, amazing. Yes. Yeah, amazing creature in there. And it's it's weird. As something as deadly as that creature was, she was actually very sympathetic towards humans, even though that she was going to eat them. So putting them in a perpetual state of bliss is, I guess, the best way to go. That actually mimics more of a spider behavior, right? I think that that episode was really uh, quite, uh, you know, I think haunting, actually. Very haunting. Um, mm -hmm. Just And I'm a huge stickler for space. I love interplanetary light years and, you know, who knows what's out there, other dimensions. The fact that they're 150,000 light years away from Earth, <laughs> I can't even imagine the hopelessness that that guy felt. Okay, so what we got here is something that I'm really enjoying, and I'm just putting darkness under the creature only and nowhere else just to show shadow, and then we're going to stop. I don't want to go any farther in that because I'm just going to obsess about it and then not finish. Okay, let's do another side view these markings that i put right here i don't even know what that is those look like two spider eggs now look like i drew a twinkie all right i don't know what's going to happen but if the both legs i'm assuming they're legs they look like that then i'll probably have to make a bigger one like that okay so now it looks like a hot dog it's got a hot dog creature and I'm taking a, let's see, that could be the face. A little bit more interesting than being a rounded one. So that's the back end. That's the face, it's kind of shaped like a shark. Um, straight back, oh, kind of looks like a leaf hopper, actually. Okay, so now we got something. Let me zoom in here so you guys can see this. So I got a bunch of stuff coming off the head. So this could be, appendages just crazy looking leaf like appendages to protect it and then there's the head is somewhere inside there and then it's got really fat legs so i'm going to darken just the under part of the body only so we know where the top is where the bottom is and where the light source eventually would be like that and then let's give it a little bit more joints uh right in there for like the shoulder here the shoulder here, and then the arm is skinny, so it attaches to that joint. Make sure it can articulate, and then uh, I like the streamlined shape of this, so we're going to put some hatching right underneath that. And then that could be the shadow, since it's like a canopy almost. And then we'll put some shadow in for the legs on the other side. All right, then we'll move on. Okay, so try one another. Oh, <laughs> well, that's going to be a shape. I don't want to do one just like that. Well, we might actually be doing that. Now it kind of looks like a cicada. Or a bed starting bug. starting with an airplane wing. It did. That could, this could easily be a ship. It really could. Or a flying fish. As a matter of fact, okay. What's going on here? Okay, so we have 
All right, tentacles. Why not? This thing is flying. That is flying. This is the head, I'm assuming. These are the wings, and then this is like the underbelly flap, kind of like a manta ray or a stingray. And this thing is shaped like a bullet, so it's probably very fast. And it looks like these are some soft antenna flowing back. It can almost look like it's swimming, too, like a very fast water bug. And I'm just darkening in the back here because I it looked. So it kind of looks like where beetles have the hard shell of the top wing folded over, and then you can see the lighter ones underneath. So that's what I'm going to put. Just indicate that with some light shading. Everything's in shadow under here, so maybe this thing can open up. Uh, okay, and I don't want to spend too much time. This could actually be the eyeball. It almost looks like a crab or a, a shrimp. And whenever you, so regardless if you're doing people for thumbnails, creatures or whatever, you should always still have a an area of focus. So when you when you look at places like this and this and this, most most of the detail is put on the face. That's what we resonate with. So if, especially if you're doing the character of, of some kind, if you're a character concept artist, you can be scribbling like this for most of the body and then the face will get most of the attention. All right. Very fast bullet-like creature. Whether it's swimming or flying, I have no idea. Probably swimming. And then we're going to stop. Okay. Last one. And this one, <laughs> this one really looks like a hairball. I have no idea what's going to happen out of this. Probably the most experimental one. Oh, boy. This is the fun part. Now it just looks like a, a cup of coffee. This looks like a, what is happening? Okay, I have to think about this for a minute. Okay, so this this is obviously the shape of the body, so it's like an hourglass. Um, this could be a tentacle. That oh, I see. Okay, so it's almost like a jellyfish, but it's hardened at the top instead of being very soft. And here we go with our Lovecraftian tentacles. So I'll just add more on the bottom, kind of like a squid, kind of like an octopus. But up here, there's a lot of stuff that could happen. Um, maybe the body looks like a plant. I, I drew these shapes in here that look like a bunch of leaves overlapping each other. So this could be a, a jungle creature that looks like a plant, but actually can get up and walk or float. So let me just put some more shape on the other side. And then in the middle, that's where the soft spot is. That could be the brain. I don't know. There we go. Fun. All right, that one's fun. Probably the most unique one that I drew up there, honestly. Let me just put some hints of uh, folding in there. One of yeah, those rare yeah. Amazonian plants. Yeah. Carnivorous, yeah? Yeah. Um, Lovely. As a creature designer, we get a lot of influence from plants anyway. Those exotic plants because... But like when I was working at Snail Games, you know, for uh, for the Stars, which is their new IP, there was another concept artist I was working with that specialized in just plant design for the for the planets, and so him and I would bounce ideas off each other because really, plants kind of do look like creatures, just in a in a different way than what we normally think: hooves, fingers, teeth, all that stuff, and they can still be pretty deadly and and beautiful at the same time. Okay, that's phase one done. We got eight ideas to choose from. So if you ever find yourself in a predicament where you're not decisive, you're undecisive, I always say, which one could you get up from, come back to, and just still want to put details on it? And that's usually your gut telling you that there is something there. When I'm looking at designs, I'm going, okay, uh, this one's cool, but I've kind of done this before. This one, you can find pretty much every fantasy MMORPG, whatever. 
this one is unique. All right, so what I would do, I would just put a green circle in that one. Um, I would put a green circle on this one. I've done this so many times, so I don't want, see, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Uh, that one probably doesn't have enough to it. I could add to it. So it looks like it boils down and this one's just, yeah, it was fun to draw, but um, it, it doesn't, doesn't really resonate with me. So I narrowed it down to three choices. I'm going to take this, this, and this. All right. Now, out of these three, uh, it looks like number three, although creepy, I've still seen it before. So we're down to number four and number six. <laughs> I kind of like the six to one. I'm leaning towards that one. Yeah. Uh, number number four has a very intimidating head. So if you were to see that thing in nature, and this thing's like 10, 15, 20 feet tall, yeah, I mean, you're pretty screwed. But number six has, it's just a unique shape. So I think I'm going to go a six. Go a six. All right. Next phase. Um. Let's take this, copy it, paste it down here. I'm going to blow it up right like that. And then what I do is I'm going to turn the opacity down. Hold on, erase that so it's not distracting. Turn the opacity down to 20%. And then I'm going to make a new layer. And if you're doing this traditionally, obviously you can't use layers. You would just do this. You would just look at your design that you chose, and you're going to do a refined version of it. So here we go. I'm going to start spending more time making sure the lines look good, adding in some shapes here and there. And this phase, you're still not perfect, so don't worry about that. There's there's going to be two, maybe three, four different refinement stages. stages before you really get what you want. So I, I do see a face and it's definitely this. I love that. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put multiple eyes in there to make it as alien as possible, but also bug-like. And, and this, I see a line going across that I thought was a tentacle, but it could just be the edge of that shape like for the forehead. So there's going to need to be some articulation in this, obviously. So I'm just going to break it off right here so the creature can actually move its neck. <laughs> and then this is going to be the abdomen. You know, I guess the thorax could be in there somewhere. But what I do need to do is I need to erase this and put a dip in there to show that there are two different body parts together that are working together. Okay, and then that Probably line a follow up question on a follow up question. Sorry, a follow up question on uh, what you're saying. So, sure. does an artist need to be very proficient in understanding anatomy? I mean, they don't have to be masters, but do you think it would really help? Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, because what happens best... is, yeah, but please yeah, go go, go. Oh, um, what happens is when we design creatures for a team, it's not about me just making cool stuff because I like it. It's about what's going to make the 3D artist job and life as easy as possible because these things eventually have to be animated. They have to be modeled and animated. So if you're designing something in 2D, the 3D department is going to look at it and model exactly what you drew. If you didn't draw joints correctly, guess what happens? That gets interpreted over to the model and then you're going to have to just do some adjusting. So the better you are at explaining the anatomy and the better it looks, the easier the, the job is going to be for everyone else. Okay, so there's a lot of really cool shapes happening inside this head that I don't really need to get rid of. I'm just going to articulate on those. Okay, so I do know 
that the bottom of the head is is a, a rounded shape, almost egg-like. But these really cool appendages are coming off. And I, I like those. It, it could be made like an exoskeleton. And then we got this big one down here, which is, is really cool. So that could be a, a jaw, maybe. So I'm going to round that off in the back to separate the muscles. So all of these can move. And I think I think that'll work pretty well. And then inside here, the face, I see more. Oh, wow. I see more of them. It's got a lot on that face. I'm going to put some shadow right near the eye because I want to make sure that the eye and the face in itself stands out. Put some black in there next to small circular shapes to convey a reflection or a shine on top of a bug-like eyeball. And I just leave the white of the background for that. Okay, there's the neck. There's the neck again. So I'm going to darken the mandibles so they pop off ahead of the neck. All right. By the way, uh, there's a there's a cleaning crew outside of my room, so you might hear a weird sound. <laughs> just just so you guys know. Okay, so there's the there's the jaw, and I'm just picking this straight from the thumbnail that I drew. I can still see the lines underneath, so I'm going to use those to my advantage. Obviously, we have to draw the other side, so it's not flat. I'm just going to put. A little bit more time into the shadow. Okay, there's coming across here. I'm gonna put some shadow here. The other thing that I like doing whenever I'm in the refinement stage and there's a, a mandible or a spike or a, a claw, I like to put some darkness, a darkness. <laughs> I like to put some darkness at the tip and then fade it off into the mandible because it gives attention to that spot because we and want the attention to be, focus yeah, yeah just bring it into focus a little bit because let's be honest a lot of times when we overlap a bunch of body parts and shapes it can get lost in the sea of sameness okay. all right it's interesting how the whole uh, shape is evolving there that's interesting yeah right? it's fun because you know you don't know what's going to happen i don't know what's going to happen i just I, I see the shape i'm like okay i'll make those legs Okay, so this, um, I okay, I have a choice. I can either keep it really fat and stubby like, or I can add a second articulation right there. And I think that's what I'm going to do. The reason it, I did that is because inside here is cartilage. This is the top of its forearm. This is more like the wrist and the hand and stuff. So I don't think there was enough on the original design to show that that part of the, the arm bent at all. It's going to put in the ground plane here to darken it off. And that's this is where I can just start throwing some tighter sketching together just to try to convey some texture of where some shadow exists, like in here where the least amount of light is so when it comes to thumbnails you don't want anything pretty and fancy when it comes to directional lighting so i just light everything from directly above okay so directly above everything under here is in shadow my my life is simpler <laughs> so i'll just start makes sense and yeah, and you still have not decided anything on how this creature would move or you know any, any story behind it at the moment right nope no story just just a cool shape just to see what happens. All right. Interesting. So that little that little bit right there is uh, it's a skinny but very strong arm. And it's coming right into what would appear to be its front shoulder joint. So now that I'm refining it, I can't escape this. This whole area inside here underneath it is going to be reserved for the shoulder joint. Um, so what I'll have to do is just separate it a little bit, make it look like a little river. And then that could be the shoulder. 
put in some darkness here to show like there's oh just a little bit of gap going into the shoulder this thing is pretty much a one big exoskeleton and then i'm going to make this pretty dark inside here to show the separation the reason that's as dark as it is because all of this is still under shadow. So I have to put some shading on top of that, but I'm not gonna press as hard. So that way the gap still shows up and you have shaded both areas. There we go. And then I can draw on top of the shading just to show some bumps and ridges in the actual bug. Okay. Uh, so I noticed something that I probably will have to change. This leg right here is too close to the body. I'm just going to move that out and then tilt it back in. The reason I'm tilting it back in is because we want to show weight distribution. The creature is applying weight to that arm, which will make it bend. You don't have to really worry about that in thumbnail sketching but you definitely have to worry about it when it comes to refinement because this is when the body really starts to show up. Okay, and then there's going to be a little, maybe a little gap here and then another little shoulder joint. Okay, it looks like, looks like that's the belly and the belly go, okay. Huh. That's just straight across and that goes straight up, kind of like, just like a beetle. All right, I'm just going to leave that there for now. This leg is obviously bigger. I have to put a little bit more time and effort into this. There's a the cartilage. There's a little wall of it. Okay. Hopefully this is helping you guys. It is indeed. Okay. And I good. can see some of them actually posting some of their drawings in the chat as well. Oh, cool. Can't wait to see those. So here, I'm going to put some details in areas where I'm confident that I know that's where it's supposed to be. I don't have to second guess the positioning of these appendages later. I know that I want them to be there, so I'll just put details in because I'm happy with it. Just to show some believability. Um, very sleek head. Okay. Uh, I know I want to draw the other leg here, so I think the leg on the other side. And this is going to be very lightly done. So when you're hatching in one direction, I'm not cross hatching, I'm just hatching. Keep it all in one direction. So there's a pattern. So like here for the front mandibles, I'm just going to hatch this all the way up. It's going to have little lines in there. That's fine. You can kind of overlap it with some scribbles to fill it in. That's cool. And really, Put a little separation in here that'd be kind of neat so maybe those parts articulate and i'm also using different line weight to build depth now remember this is still thumbnailing <laughs> we haven't even gotten into final paintings or final choices of uh textures or anything it's just thumbnailing a lot of times clients won't require you to go this in depth They'll just be like, hey, we need a cool monster. Just give us a painting. It's like, oh, okay. And then it works. So all the exploration on materials and you know everything would come in much later when you're doing the final render. Yes. Okay. It's awesome. Yeah, because the mate's standing out here. Yeah. For the final, uh, I would just search high resolution bug pics and I would just take textures and do it. Period. I, I wouldn't go crazy with it. And then, of course, there would be heavy paint overs and whatnot. OK, so it looks like uh, this kneecap has to be pretty. See, now I changed the whole design. Now I have to do that. All right. All right, so once I got that, that could be the dip. There's the separation. Okay, there's the dip, separation. And okay, we already got that in there. There we go. That makes me feel better. Now it could be more streamlined. All 
All right, there we go. Okay, uh, the, the back of the beetle, nothing special. We'll just keep it like that. It looks like a car. Maybe that's a stinger. Ooh, how about that? Wait a minute. What if that did sting? That's an interesting part of the animation, actually. That's great. And we're going to put some rolls right here because if anybody has been stung before and you see the, the back end of a bee, those things are so flexible. They can shoot out like way out here and just sting you. So maybe that thing does. Maybe it's coiled up. There's some other body parts down here where I, I, I need to figure out what's happening. Maybe some sections of the exoskeleton that's more flexible. So I think I'll, I'll put those in. And then a little bit of shading just to show where the separation of those little areas are. All right, there we go. Maybe the underbelly is another hard shell, I guess, right? I think that's how it's going to look like. Yeah, yeah, because I put the skin in there, and then it's probably going to be really thick right there, and then here again. Yep. Okay, and then that's obviously going to be the darkest right on the leg. So that's coming at us. All right, so we're gonna flip this. Okay, draw this way now. Always good to flip the canvas. It's like a fresh set of eyes looking at it. Okay, so draw in front of the head there, put in some more shading. There we go. That would be dark. That would be dark. So there's a there's a play on values here. So notice how that's dark and it goes to light. This is dark next to the light. It's just just figure out what contrast works the best for your values. Okay, so those are going to be a little bit more deadly, I guess. Oh, yeah. That Are those more definitely... like mandibles or uh, more like claws in the front? I think they're more like <laughs> mandibles. With them. Your guess is as good as mine, man. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> if they I'm were like the claws, yeah. that, would be, that would be creepy. All right. So they look I... like uh, one of those, um, you know, I think you have those beetles, right? I think they, they do have claws, right? I think those mandibles are as, as good as uh, scissor hands. I think that's yeah. an interesting one. Yeah. Okay. There we go. And then I'll just put some, I'm going to put some recognizable details probably on just the front part. So maybe there are some bumps and ridges that we can see on the front. I think that would add a really cool texture and maybe like right here on that part, maybe here. I think that'll really help the design. And then since the back leg is the biggest, and now that I did that, this would be a, a cool opportunity to do it the rest of the body, but strategically, of course, uh, maybe there's like a, a row right here, row right there, and then one going down the middle. Put some thickness to that shell, obviously. And now I'm just going to put some shading in here, very lightly, and show some skin stretching. So this thing is kind of mammalian, so it's going to have some skin. Very lightly, though, you don't want to do anything too heavy because then the streaks will show up and then uh, it's, it doesn't look that good. OK, so that needs to be a little darker. Maybe I pressed too hard on the spikes. I don't know. I think I did. Let's soften those up. Yeah, that looks better. 
I was getting a little too carried away. Okay. That, that's also another question that I had is like, you know, I think when do you realize that this is too much or this is like, you know, I think it's a balance between what it could be. Uh, when, when the design intent is clearly shown, that's when you should stop. Yeah, when you find yourself, when you find yourself already getting the silhouette and you're like, oh, wait, I'm just going to add in another little ridge and another, like, nope, stop. <laughs> So like here, I was I was wondering what would this look like if it was a tail, like a lizard crustacean turtle thing. But I think I'll just keep it. A, you know what? I'm it, uh, no, no, no. I'm I'm gonna put the shell ending right there, and then that's it. Keep it simple. No. Okay, and then. Top this one off. I'll just darken some of these front mandals in here and then put the majority of the details in that area. There we go. I'm just crisscrossing some lines here to form its own texture. There we go. Okay. There we go. And and after that, I mean, you zoom out. That's the whole thumbnailing process. And then from there, you could jump into some colorways. You know, you could you can throw some flat color on there, or you could do something like this: uh, high resolution beetle pick. Go into images, and if you find anything that's cool, that's in side view, that you could use, then copy and paste it, and then you can just start painting over it. <clears throat> I see something from this rhinoceros beetle. I wonder what that would look like. So copy that, paste it, and then um, take probably the top half. Copy and paste that, use it for the head, and then turn it around. And then once you're on that layer, you just make sure you go up to image. Oh, wait, hang it up. Hit enter. Okay. Auto contrast, and then I'll darken a little bit. And then you right click, retransform, right click again, warp. Let's zoom in here so we can see it. And then you just start playing with it like that. And voila, you start to texture your critter. But you also have to honor your sketch because your your sketch can definitely get lost in a sea of photo bashed images. So you need to be very careful. You can see here I'm kind of painting over that, taking that dark brown that's in there for the spots or dark red or umber. And then I'm just painting in some areas here, sketching on top. And we have it, and that's how, that's how you could texturize it. Now, I know this is going to be a bit controversial, but you could literally use Mid Journey to get textures. I mean, it is what it is. You can get AI to do it, not the entire picture because that's cheating. But if you need a specific texture that just does not exist on the internet, you can get it from there. You can get it from high res pictures um, or whatever. The other great thing about taking a photo like that. So let's jump the photo around. Oop, but no, <laughs> not vertically. There we go. The belly is done for you. Look at that. Just copy it, paste, blow it up, and there's your belly. And of course, you can manipulate that. It's it's not all going to be just that fuzziness and brown or whatever. You can take other pictures of beetles and such and then try to do that. Because I could take that, right click, warp, try to bend it to where the body is, you know, flatten it off there, scoop that up. I mean, how, how crazy would that look? And then what you do is you turn the opacity down on that so you know where to erase. Then you erase it, so like on top of the leg. 
there uh, on this leg, this one. There we go. Shoulder. That that part. Um, let's see where else. Oh yeah, this one. Mandible. That mandible. So you can kind of see where this layering would happen. Right there. It's only in the skin part. It's not the exoskeleton. And then there you go. Turn it back on. Voila. Look how cool that's looking so far. So you can you can mix other stuff too. You go back to the internet. And let's say you you see something else that's neat. Um probably better if it was side view, but I don't know. You might oh, this is nice. Look at that. Look at those colors. Let's Beautiful see if that texture works. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Copy. Paste. Wonder what that looked like next to. Yeah, I guess that could work. Um maybe not. This is me just studying it for a second because it probably will happen. Okay. So one thing I see that would work. Uh that shell. Man, that shell is a beautiful shell. Okay. I'm gonna take this area. Copy and paste, move it right into that. And then I'm going to manipulate that a little bit. So I'm just going to bend it. Bend that end. There we go. Get those nice speckles on there. I'll end up erasing a lot of this. Okay. And then make sure the contrast is up. Erase that. Soft eraser. Let's see. This just just erase around it softly. Make sure you get some of that texture in. I don't know what's happening in the back there. What is that? Oh, okay. All right. So then the key is let's go back up to the sketch layer. I'm going to take some of this really nice, I guess, tan. <laughs> Not burnt umber yet. I'm just going to slide it right on top of that texture. This, and then I'm going to eye drop that blue. And I'm going to go right back over top of the brown. Remember, it's, it's your painting. That's all it is. You're painting. It's a paintbrush. Make sure you get all that in there. I do like that tan color, so I'm going to take that. And I'm just going to maybe sprinkle it down here a little bit. See what'll happen. I'm spotting here and there. Yeah. What now? No, I said I'm spotting here and there. Yeah. Just to add some oh. additional text. So yeah. Yeah. Looks cool. Okay. And then of course, inside here where the least amount of light is showing, I'm gonna take some of the colors down here. It's not pure black, but it's getting there. And I'm just gonna paint inside here to separate that blue from what would be the next shell. And that's probably not dark enough. So I actually have to go pretty, pretty dark on that. Okay. So then when you zoom out, it's, it's up to you on how far you want to take the photo bashing. So for me, I like to photo bash large areas. If it's a smaller one, I'll go back in and with my, pencil brush and just sketch it. So for example, a pencil brush, and then I might get a brighter version of that. So I drop that. That's pretty saturated. But let's say we want to go a little brighter and a little bit more saturated. Okay, and then I'll sketch on top of that. Maybe have some really cool designs coming down. And it's that's it. It's just layer, 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 see what's working. You know, in the front here, I see potential to be <clears throat> really saturated with that, almost like a burnt umber. There we go. All right. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Is that helping everyone? 
It is. It is. In fact, actually, like uh, I was just thinking, like the hard shell that uh, you know you're actually painting on this, right? I mean, do you actually? Um, yeah, again, you're not restricting to any rules as such, right? You're just going. It's a free flow of information right now, of yeah. idea. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, just just letting the idea come out and just accepting what is versus just having an idea in my head and trying to perfect that onto paper. It's it's one of the hardest things to do because we have these images in our head of what we think is going to look cool, and then it we we put it on paper or we put it in our document, and it's going, man, what is happening? And you didn't go through the design process, and then you get frustrated with it, and you just give up. So this whole design that I'm drawing right now, it wouldn't have happened unless I went I went through all of this. Um, the other thing about being a concept artist in general is most of your work is never going to be seen by anybody. So one thing I always tell my students is treat your sketchbook like a diary. You know, you just, you put your thoughts down, you track your growth and you see how you feel. And that's that. You just tell a story with it. Um, so yeah, I could spend the next three hours on this thing. I don't want to, but I, uh, <laughs> it's the progression that matters and as you rightly say like you know the sketchbook becomes the diary so it, it shows how the designs evolve over a period of time so that's an amazing thing so and, there are quite and, uh, a few drawings in the chat Sorry, oh yeah Let, let's see them i want to see them oh look at that that's cool a lot of bugs these silhouettes are standing out good too Lovecraftian all the way. I wouldn't want to see any of those in real life. Tentacles. Yeah. yeah, all the tentacles. That's cool. Looks like a big that's brute. That's lovely. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, do you want to do questions now or? Yeah, yeah. We can switch to Q and A. Uh, I guess I'll ask. Uh, if they, let them actually start posting the questions in the meantime. Sure. Yeah. I like the drawings. This so, is great. To get things uh, started, like, you know, I have a couple of questions from my end. Like, you know, I think with AI being, you know, you know I think pro predominantly, like, you know, I think a second nature for most of the artists. Like, where do you think a, a line has to be drawn when it comes to AI and the inspiration as such? Um, well, AI has, the line has to be drawn when there's no creativity on your part. Because, like, the comparison I make for AI is photo bashing and art directors have been photo bashing for 20 plus years. It's the exact same thing. The only difference is a computer is finding images for you and throwing them together so you don't have to. But what do we always have to do when we photo bash? And that is we still have to put our own artistic touch on it. So if you if you if you go into mid journey and type in giant bug and everything's painted for you already, you just put that in your portfolio. That's awful. Like the, the, it's not you. So my recommendation is if you're going to use AI, just take bits and pieces of it as, a, as an idea. Redraw the legs, redraw the shell, redraw the head, or whatever creature or character you're doing to make it your own. Um, you know, that, that's why it's always a good idea to do the thumbnailing first so that you just you keep that integrity. You know? Yeah, and, and that, that stands out to be the original idea too. I'm yeah. sorry, what was that? I said that stands out to be the original idea too. So if you have, if you follow the thumbnail sketch and then build on top of it, then yes, it is still the original idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, waiting for some questions, guys. I mean, if there's anything, please post them in the Q and A or in the chat. I'm happy to ask on your behalf. Yeah, I'll answer anything as long as it's not too controversial. I think AI Just is probably wait. as controversial as you can get. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it's such a polarizing subject. It's anybody, anytime anybody asks me that, I'm just like, Ugh. not not in this session, but just like on YouTube or I don't know LinkedIn when I post artwork. It's like, is this AI or using AI? It's like, oh no, I'm not. It's no, it's hard. It's very difficult of late, I think, to even distinguish between. I think it's gone. Very canny uh, in its result as well. I mean, it's it's good for uh, reference, 
but yes, uh, I think as a production art, uh, probably not. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think we have quite a sh lot of shy audience, but I think yes, there's Geo who had asked a question. How do you find things to add when a design has a big smooth shape, but the big smooth shape is part of the design? Um, you just have to like throw lines together and see what happens so that you're not bogged down into trying to invent little shapes coming off of it. I mean, that's what I do. If I do something that's spherical, if I do something that's oval, and I'm going, there's no way I want the final design to be that smooth and round. I just start throwing lines on it. And then, like, my brain will see it and goes, oh, that's a cool shape. And then I'll just kind of play off those cool shapes. That's it. Sounds good. So more like texture yeah. lines. Yeah, they could be texture lines. They could be extra parts to the design in general. Like if you're doing a robot. You know, you drew one line going horizontal across the robot. That could be, uh, I don't know, an antenna, an arm. But it, it doesn't matter. When I'm doing thumbnailing, I don't, I don't really think about textures. I, just, I don't care about them. Michelle like, but, has but, a question here. Sorry, I mean, sure. go ahead, uh, Bobby. Yeah. No, I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead. Okay. So his question is how to think when doing thumbnails. Should it be fast or should it be good? Fast. Fast. Yeah. Fast is the answer. That was quick. Okay, Rohit has a question. What do you think is the best way to practice to build uh, our own strong visual library? Uh, well, you'd have to pick what genre that you really love to study. So, it okay. That, that's like a big question. Um, try to narrow this down as best I can. With me, since I niched in creatures. My visual library was insects, movies with creatures in them, going to the zoo, natural history museum. And it's just a compilation of collecting images in a folder on your desktop with all of those subject matters in it. Bones, insects, anatomy, studying muscles. Uh, that, that's what I would do. And repetition too, so that you can start inventing stuff on the fly. That's interesting. Hopefully that helped. Yeah, hopefully that helped. Yeah. Just waiting for any more questions to show up. Sure. I think there's a lot of fire trucks going by, so you might hear that. <laughs> I bought this new mic and I it, it does a pretty good job at drowning sounds out. It, it does. We can't hear a thing. Okay, <laughs> good. NBA, the ambient sounds. Oh. So, I mean, how many hours do you do you usually like, you know, I think spend, uh, you know, I think in ideation and uh, in art work? Um, well, if I'm working digitally, the workflow is different. So the sketching phase is actually not that long. Um, image gathering is actually the, the reference gathering is longer than the sketching. But when it comes to final renders, I mean, are you talking like a day, a week? I mean, per day, it could be anywhere from three to seven hours, I guess. Um, if I'm drawing something traditionally, like I'm looking at a sketch right here, it's on my floor. It's going to be a 15 to 20 hour sketch, but there's no way I'd sit and do the whole thing in one sitting. So like when I do my pencil drawings, that's when I obsess the most. <laughs> and I'm just right. on it. Yes, yeah, Saeed, look at that. That's an awesome. Yeah, Something. that's 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 pretty cool. OK, you get a heart for that. Awesome. And uh, yeah, one other point I wanted to ask you was like, you know, I think, OK, they're there. I think Kazmi actually asked a question when creating thumbnails okay. should and artists think about biomechanical movements of the creature or just the shape. Yeah, movements are important, too. Yeah, when when you start the thumbnail and you're in the initial phase, when you're just scribbling, the biomechanics don't matter, but when you're refining it, they absolutely matter. Because that's when you start, you, you have to start fleshing out the joints and where you want the legs to go and such. And most of the creatures uh, that, you know, I think they always have flip joints, right? I think is there a reason why that's actually, uh, you know, a preferable choice? I mean, just to create the creepiness in it. Uh, what was the first part? Uh, most of the creatures I've, like that we notice in mainstream films, they usually have flipped joints, right? I think they have ankles that are like flipped the opposite direction. 
Yeah, it adds the creepiness. Yeah, yeah, it's it's weird, but it's true. Like most of them have it. And what, I, I, what do you think of H.R. Geiger's, uh, you know, artwork? I mean, I I just wanted to have because he's, he's one of like the Xenomorph was, you know, the iconic uh, creation from his end. And we're talking about, like, you know, I think uh, key inspirations from these legends. So what do you think of his, his kind of art style? I love it. I love it. I got several H.R. Geiger books. Uh, he was such ahead of his time. And a lot of people don't see the artwork that wasn't publicized or popular. You know, like everybody saw the Xenomorph, the face hugger and stuff. Okay. Uh, but... I mean, the fact that he did all of that with an airbrush, nobody can touch a Char Geiger. I don't think. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Rohit has a question here, like, okay, this one I think we've already done. So he has another question. Sometimes we got carried away with uh, collecting so many images, uh, image references, but ended up using a little. But even non so, is there a way we can pick the right images without being carried away? Picking the right references without being carried away. Well, picking the right reference is a skill in itself. You just have to learn how to do it. A lot of times we we get a brief and then we we don't know what to look for. So we just start collecting random stuff. You have to narrow down your reference choices to whatever is going to best help you. So if you only need to collect 10 Im images, that's great. Or if you need to collect 30, do that. But just make sure it's in the same subject matter. Um, that... Really, that's the only kind of advice I can say. It, you can't, you can't teach. Well, you could teach good reference gathering, but you also have to have good taste. And unfortunately, a lot of people do not. That's why their designs fail. It's because they didn't look at the right reference. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Sorry, I did not give you a great answer for that. So, but sometimes I guess uh, the references from the other, uh, you know, I think uh, disciplines also help, right? I mean, let's say like if you're talking about bugs, but then you're designing vehicles or spaceships, uh, yeah. they do have a significant, uh, you know, I think an overlap. Yeah, it, and it does come down to discipline. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of artists were just stubborn people. And we just, we think that what we know is all we need to know. And then it kind of makes our portfolio suffer. So a lot of things are in common, though, when you look at references. So, for example, you mentioned spaceships and bugs. Bugs, spaceships, cars, weapons. You can collect image one image board and get good ideas for all four of those subject matters. So it's just a matter of you doing your due diligence and asking yourself, does that look like a spaceship? Can I turn it into one? You know, that's when you really have to follow the brief to a T. You know, like a lot of times artists will just, and this comes with discipline and just stubbornness. They'll just not read everything. They'll just start drawing. And I don't want to go down so a rant. I, <laughs> <laughs> I find myself doing that. And, and sometimes it's like, okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> Ishita has a question here. What is the first thing that came to your mind when sketching machine kind of monsters? Oh, then you already answered it according to her. That's good. Yeah. A pre-answered question. That's lovely. Yeah, I think we are. Uh, I, I'll just uh, uh, we'll wait for a minute in case anyone has questions. I know we have seven more minutes in the session, but uh, one one thing, Bobby. I mean, I've been telling you, right? I think we we've been we've been I've been following your work, and I really love your work. I I, I'm, I still proudly uh, keep your subconscious book, you know, among the uh, <laughs> other uh, popular ones from Seekmead and High Geigers. You know, I think for me, it's 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 one of those red collections that I have. So yeah, thanks for actually contributing all this to us. Oh, you're very welcome. Anytime I can help people. Awesome. I think we can end this session. If that is, if nobody has any questions, then I think we can call it a day. All right. Well, uh, I just one, one last wrap up point. Sorry. Uh, like, you know, I just wanted like, you know, I think, do you have any last pieces of advice to anyone who's aspiring to get into creature art? Uh, what is the fundamental thing that they have to start with? Uh, creature art? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Animals. The study anatomy. And, and it's so straightforward, but when, when you're a creature concept artist, it's going to bleed into characters also. So it's going to be up to you to kind of marry the two. When I worked at NetEase, 
my job title was senior character concept artist, but the majority of my stuff was creatures. I only think I did one human. And then when I worked at Snail Games, it was uh, mostly creatures. Well, no. What was it? It was creatures and characters. So it's like you never know what you're going to do. So study people and study animals. Um, because, let I mean, in your portfolio, a hiring manager can see in the first eight seconds if you can design people and creatures. Not draw them well, design them well. They're going to see it. And the other thing is leave out figure drawing in your portfolio. You don't need it. <laughs> yeah, there, there are two more questions that have propped up here now. So I think are four-legged creatures more artistic than bipedal uh, creatures? No. It's the same. And that is, it's the same, right? Yeah. 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 Joey, Joey has a question. Is it better to keep yourself from having too many sketches to choose from or continue if you're not inspired by what you have not you have made yet? Yeah, continue. Because there there are times when you'll draw five or six and you go, you know what? I don't really like these. You just keep going. Just keep going until something sings. Um, other times you'll get, like I'll, I'm going to keep referencing back to being a freelancer and even when you're working full-time, you get a brief and the art director might say, out of six to eight thumbnails, we will choose. Well, you, that, you're at the mercy of that, that uh, requirement. So you're only going to get six to eight. I just did an art test for somebody the other day, and it said no, no fewer than two thumbnails for an environment, no more than six. That's it. And then I had to choose from those. Other times you can go hog wild. You know, like you work at 343 and they ask, hey, we need Master Chief helmets, do 30. Like, okay. So. And, and you still it. you and still you time those thumbnails for two minutes at a time, right? I think you ensure that Most it is timed. Most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time. Okay. I think one last question. So I think what's your take on art and technology? Technology surely helps, I mean, helping us in art, but do you feel technology is paralyzing our thinking capacity a bit? And this is coming from my team. So yeah, <laughs> you can let's see. Yeah, I think uh, you kind of got to be careful. I'm I'm an old school traditionalist. So if you take Photoshop away from me, I'll be so happy just drawing stuff on paper um you do have to be careful with ai with with to like cintiq tablets and and ipads and stuff it doesn't matter it's like i tell people you could buy all the fancy equipment in the world and you'll still suck and it's like okay well why do i suck so to take all that away you know it's like being a youtuber and buying fancy cameras and podcast microphones and it's just like oh my channel's so awful <laughs> you know so <laughs> concept art at its core is what you are able to design and produce because some of the best designs in the world have come on napkins and pamphlets and drawn on airplanes you know like on the back of brochures so it really doesn't hopefully that helped but um it, it doesn't really matter about technology it, it, it reminds me of that analogy like you know i think it, it re the camera really doesn't matter but the eyes uh, behind that lens uh, is the is 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 what exactly defines the the picture so, yeah yeah 100% yeah, i think um, that's all bobby i think we are done for the session and i okay. think i i take the opportunity to thank from everyone's side you know i think thanks a lot for actually introducing us to like you know thumbnail sketching and it was quite a radical thought process because we are so confined to our process. We try to like picture everything up front and then try to like, you know, mimic everything on paper. But this was quite a different uh, experience. Thanks so much. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me and, and good luck with everybody and your stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs>